Welcome back. We've got new Fox News polls, which find 33 percent of GOP primary voters are supporting Florida Governor Ron DeSantis without former President Donald Trump in the 2024 presidential race. Now, Vivek Ramaswamy is in a very close second spot at 31 percent. All of this as the same poll finds Ramaswamy's favorability among Republican primary voters is rising, increasing six points since the GOP debate. But at the same time, his unfavorability numbers have also risen with all voters and Republican primary voters as well. Let's talk to the man himself, entrepreneur, business person and 2024 Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy is the author of the book Capitalist Punishment, How Wall Street is Using Your Money to Create a Country You Did Not Vote For. Vivek, great to have you back. Thanks very much for being here. And I want to talk about the administrative state and your campaign promises and policy expectations. But before all of that, let me get your take on the strike, the leading news of the morning, 13,000 UAW workers on the picket lines. How do you see it? So I think the UAW strike is misplaced, but I understand where they're coming from. Who they should really be striking against is President Biden. This is a president whose policies have ensured inflation over 16 percent, cumulative inflation since he took office. That means prices are higher while wages have not kept up. So I understand the frustration, not just of these workers, but workers in other segments of the economy as well. But the real root cause are the disastrous economic policies of this administration, Maria. That's why I'm running for president. I get the frustration. I don't even really blame the workers, even though I think the union bosses are channeling this in the wrong direction. This falls at the feet of the current administration. That's why I'm running for U.S. president. We can fix this economy, deliver economic growth, and make sure that everybody's actually participating in it, which hasn't been the case so far. All right. Well, that that all sounds good. You say you get it. What are you going to do about it? What is the policy to reverse this spiking inflation then? It's actually not that complicated, Maria. One is unlock American energy, drill, frack, burn coal, embrace nuclear. Energy costs actually drive inflation. And also by driving more energy production, we're driving economic growth. Stop using taxpayer money to pay people more to stay at home than to go to work. That's contributing to a lot of supply chain. The worker shortage contributes to supply chain shortages, which then contribute to inflation. I also think we need to stabilize the U.S. dollar, Maria. That's a job for the U.S. Fed. Stabilize the U.S. dollar as a unit of measurement. And then most importantly, strip back a majority of federal regulations that I view as unconstitutional coming from that administrative state that act like a wet blanket on the U.S. economy. And it's holding us back economically. And that's why, Maria, Mm -hmm. this week I've been very clear. We will shut down many of those agencies, rescind a majority of those federal regulations and most importantly, stimulate the economy that way. And we have a very clear plan to achieve it. Well, I mean, look, this sounds a lot like the Trump policies, frankly. And I guess one agency I want to know your plans for is the DOJ. Hunter Biden has been indicted on three federal gun charges. Uh, uh, The first son uh, apparently facing 25 years in jail. Nobody believes that. But you're calling this indictment a smokescreen. Why? Yes. So I do think this is a smokescreen designed to dupe the public. The real issue with the Biden family, I've said it before and I'll say it again, is the fact that I believe they are selling off and have sold off our foreign policy in return for privately enriching their family, particularly vis-a-vis Ukraine. And I think there's an element that deserves investigation on China as well. And instead of investigating that, we have a deflection on a small, thin gun charge. I do think the impeachment inquiry is a step in the right direction. But I think the DOJ is purposefully covering its tracks. I also think it's no accident, Maria, that you see the indictment now come versus the settlement that they proposed before, right as Biden's popularity within the Democratic Party is slowly declining. And so I truly believe it's the administrative police state that holds the keys to power. They're using this as slight leverage over Biden. Biden. And if yeah. the time comes where they need him to get out of the way so they can trot out a new puppet for the Democrat Party, that's when the charges are going to go up. And I hate to be so cynical, but I think that's the truth of the matter for what's actually happening in this country. Well, I got to ask you about your own foreign policy. But before I do, you just said there's going to be another puppet. What if it's Gavin Newsom? Do you think you can beat Gavin Newsom? Yes, I think it doesn't matter which puppet they trot out. You mark my words, Maria, when I'm the nominee and I expect to be, they won't let Biden run against me. But here's my strategy. 
In my speeches, I don't talk about Biden at all. I talk about our own vision. What do we stand for? What does it mean to be an American? That's how we're going to win this election in a landslide, not just focusing on the other side. Well, you say you want, as president, you would cut one million federal employees in 2025. We are on the doorstep of a government shutdown. Uh, Now, government employees will still get paid, but the government is about to shut down because they're not funding the government. We don't have the money. What's your plan? Well, first of all, we have to reduce the size of that government. One of the reasons presidents from Reagan to Trump haven't been able to do it is that they were duped, Maria, by the advisor class that said you can't fire these many employees because of civil service protections. Earlier this week at the America First Policy Institute in D.C., I gave a speech laying out exactly why the U.S. president can absolutely do it. The civil service protections, they only protect against individual employee firings. They do not apply to mass reductions in force. And mass layoffs are absolutely what I will bring to that D.C. bureaucracy. Using legal authority in the law, the 1977 Reorganization Act, that gives me as U.S. president the power to shut down redundant government agencies, shut down agencies if that would promote the economy. And so I think it takes a unique combination of, yes, an outsider, I am that, but also an outsider who understands the law and the constitution of this country. That's why I'm going to take that administrative state agenda of shutting it down even further than any president who's come before. That's the one war I have committed to wage, Maria. I won't wage well, unnecessary foreign wars. The war I'll wage is against the administrative state here at home, and I think we're going to win. Well, I'm glad you said the word war because we are apparently in a soft war right now with China. We all remember the, uh, you know, the balloon that uh, the surveillance balloon that flew over our country that Joe Biden allowed to fly over our military installations for a week. We know that there's massive surveillance programs underway on American citizens from communist China. And yet you wrote on X the other day that Jake Paul changed your mind and convinced you to join TikTok. You wrote in part this, kids under age 16 should not be using it, but the fact is that many young voters are, and we're not going to change this country without winning. Vivek, we all believe, uh, many people believe that TikTok is another surveillance tool of the Communist Party. Do you believe you're being surveilled right now by the CCP? Because you're on TikTok. I think I probably... I think I probably was even before I was on TikTok. The reality is, Maria, American companies like Airbnb are handing over American user data to the CCP as a condition for doing business in China. So I have been probably since my first book, Woke Inc., very early on this issue, exposing that scam of the CCP, using American companies to get U.S. user data. But we're not going to change this country until we actually win this election. And one of the things that I came to the realization of is I'm open to being persuaded of ideas, Maria. You want to know what? The GOP talks a lot about reaching young voters. Well, Democrats are doing it far more effectively while the GOP is sitting in its own silo with its head in the sand. One of the things that I'm doing is we are bringing young people along in droves. That's how we win this election in a landslide. And when I am U.S. president, we'll make sure that the CCP is not playing these games anymore, that they play by the same set of rules. But I can't get there just by complaining with vengeance and grievance from the sidelines. We're going to get in there and get it done from the White House itself. And the other thing that I've said as U.S. President, Maria, is that we have to declare economic independence from China. If that was a Russian spy balloon flying over half the United States, we would have shot it down in an instant and ratcheted up sanctions. We didn't do it for the Chinese spy balloon because we're scared. Why are we scared? Because we depend on China from the shoes on our feet to the phones in our pockets. And next week in central Ohio, next Thursday, I'm going to be laying out in a speech exactly how we'll declare economic independence while actually promoting American prosperity here at home. Well, people are worried about the threat of communist China. And I I don't know, I I don't believe that the CCP is exactly shaking in its boots about what you're saying about communist China right now. I've got to tell you, um, there are companies that are in. They absolutely should be. There are companies in index funds and stocks that trade on U.S. exchanges from China, uh, from Russia, even in the face of this war. And that basically has Americans funding the expansion of communist China. Why are there companies that are sanctioned, already sanctioned uh, from China, that are, are still in these indexes 
Bottom line, are you going to use the economic and capital markets lever to push back on communist China? That means putting rules in place yes. that will forbid investors from buying companies that are tied to the Chinese military. Will you do it? Yes, absolutely. In fact, Marie, I'm going one step further. I favor total decoupling from China, and I think we can do it. Many in the U.S., even in the Republican Party, say that would be too damaging. I disagree. If we onshore a lot of those supply chains to the U.S. and also do deals with South Korea, Japan, India, and Australia, this becomes far more feasible for the United States. We cannot depend on an enemy for our modern way of life. That was never true of the USSR, shouldn't be true here. So I'll tell the CCP, you will not buy land in this country, you will not donate to universities in this country. You will not turn companies into lobbying pawns. That's how they get to rules like that, Maria. It's going to take a president with a spine and frankly, somebody who isn't captured by special interests in this country. I'm independent. I'm putting my own hard earned money into this campaign precisely to avoid being captured by those special interests and standing up to China, declaring economic independence. That's how we'll be strong in our foreign policy. And I actually think that's how we're also going to strengthen our domestic economy here at home, Maria. And I'm going to lay that out in the speech next Thursday in unprecedented detail. That's what it's going to take more than just talking points. Somebody who actually has a spine to see that through. And you know what? They should be shaking in their boots if an outsider like me gets to that White House, as I expect. To. Vivek, real quick before you go, you said you're luring young yeah. people into voting for you. Joe Biden yeah. did it by promising that they are going to forgive their student debt. Are you going to reverse that? Absolutely. I think that we have a bad habit of using taxpayer money to pay people to do the exact opposite of what we should want them to do. More money to stay at home instead of go to work. More money for the people who don't repay their student loans than repay their student loans. The way we're bringing young people along, Maria, is actually by speaking the truth, being unvarnished. And I tell them, you don't have to agree with 100 percent of what I say. But if you know that I'm giving you what I believe 100 percent of the time, that's more authentic and different than traditional politicians that have lied to the people time and again. And we're seeing college students, young people come along in droves because they are hungry for purpose and meaning. The left has fed them woke poison. We're giving them the real thing of American national identity. That's how I think we're going to win this in a landslide with many of those young people behind us. Vivek, what role has your wife played in the campaign? Crucial. She actually brings just a daily, much a real perspective from what she does. She saves lives every day. She's a throat surgeon. She flies sometimes to Iowa after 12 cases in the operating room to then talk about her vision for the future of the country and how we raise our kids with the same values that she and I were raised in. And I'm so grateful to have not only her moral support in this, but frankly, her voice in this. She makes me better. And I'm convinced, Maria, she's going to make our country better, leading from the White House in a way that young boys and girls alike can say that's somebody I want my kids to grow up and be like. That's the kind of example that she sets. And I expect she's going to be an outstanding first lady and a leader in our country and ah. incredibly grateful for the sacrifices she makes every day. Beautiful family. We are happy to show the pictures of your beautiful family and uh, wife and children. Vivek, great to talk with you. Thanks very much for being here this morning. Thank you, Maria. Good to see you. All right. We'll see you soon. Vivek Ramaswamy. Let's take